Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today I'm here all dressed up because I just came back from an interview. It went really well. And I was thinking about a question that I got from a, a service member about maybe last week or so. And I thought it would be really good material that you guys, it's a question that you guys might also have. So here we go. The question, the question basically was my, it's not even my friend, this, this acquaintance of a friend of mine asked them to ask me if there was any, what are the major differences between a federal resume and a regular resume? And you know, like what, what should they look out for? What are the things they need to do? All this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think, and you guys have probably seen this before, like sometimes people ask the wrong questions. And I think this is one of those cases where, and it's it's not this person's fault. It's, it's that we've all been conditioned, everybody in society, military members included, we've been conditioned to think that our focus should be on a resume because a resume is used during used by employers during the job search and it basically explains all of the skills and abilities that we have right so we just assume that that's the most important thing we assume that that's that's the thing that has to be perfect uh perf perfect i was going to say perfectionalized Ugh. The thing that has to be perfect before we can go out and conquer, right? Wrong. Super wrong. Here's the thing. All resumes are different, okay? Your resume, my resume, we, we're coming from different places. Every company is going to have a different process for resumes. Some companies are as simple as, hey, I saw you on the street. I liked what you did. I'm going to hire you. No resume involved. Others or a simple let's interview for a second, well not a second, 30 minutes or so, if I get a good vibe, we're good. Now, the reason why federal resumes in particular get a lot of, a uh, lot more, what's the word I'm looking for, attention, is because that's what the government uses. They use, a, they use resumes as, as one of their tools to categorize candidates, prioritize candidates, all these other things, okay? Companies that are not affiliated or organized with the, uh, the government don't rely that heavily on resumes. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, I mean, tons of companies do. I mean, you, you, Google, Apple, Amazon, they all use a resume system. But the point is, I think the government is the most dependent on resumes of everybody, okay? Most companies, you can write a resume in just about any format you want and it can be in normally about a one pager is all you want, the just the highlights, and then you turn it in, boom, you're good, right? When it comes to government jobs, when it comes to file, going for a federal job, a contracting job for the government, anything like that, agency job, you you're going to have they want details, they want specifics, especially like if you're getting any kind of clearance job. That's a whole other bag of cats, but you have to give them a ton of information and they they basically they gather that information in the form of a resume okay so say you go to a job fair and you have different agencies there that are that are looking at resumes and you hand them your one or two page resume with all your stuff on there they're going to say hey this looks good you've got a lot of skills we we we, we want Go to this website, and we want you to put in all of this stuff in our website's resume machine, okay? So what does that mean? That means no matter how much time you spend on your own personal resume, when you go to fill out 
the federal resume, an agency, whatever the, whatever the thing is, it's going to be in a completely different format. And here's the real other trippy thing, right? From agency to agency, their, their formats are going to be different. From contract to contract, the formats are going to be different. Okay, so one agency could have, say, five different contracts, all of them looking for different requirements in their resume format, all of them with different formats to begin with, right? So the point is don't get too attached to doing things one way. Don't assume that, that you're ever going to write this one resume that's going to save the world and everybody's going to like bend the knee and, and bow down to you. Never going to happen. Okay. What actually ends up happening is you're probably going to have to, just for one job, just for one job, just for one interview, you're probably going to have to write an average of three to five resumes to get that job, especially if you're contracting, right? Uh, let me give you an example. You have your normal one-page resume or so that you give out. It's your general resume that you give out at job fairs. You give that out. You get a you get a bite. Someone's interested. You're interested. They tell you to go to their site, fill out their resume. You go to their site. You you, you probably have to spend another hour or two filling out their resume. Then you wait until you get a response, and if uh, if you get a response, they may ask for some updates. They may ask. Uh, they they may call you, right? If they're trying to schedule a pre-interview or something like that, a phone interview, and they'll ask you questions where the answers are on the resume. You know why? Nobody reads the resumes. <laughs> okay, it's sad, but it's true. Or sometimes they'll ask the same questions to try to confirm. To, to make sure that like what you said is really true and it wasn't just someone writing for you. But the, the point is you'll do that and then at some point later you may have to rewrite your resume one more time before before you, you get put into that position. Now if you are working for a company that's a contractor to an agency, to a government agency or something like that, you're going to go through that whole process I already said. Once you interview with them both over the phone and in person you're then going to have to fill out another contract or sorry you're then going to have to fill out another interview for that specific contract that they're going to put you on go and interview with the client and then here's the thing let's say the client this happened to me one time let's say the client says well you don't really have what we need for this specific contract but there's this other contract over here in your perfect fit. Well, guess what? You have to write another resume that fits that contract, right? So it's never ending. The point is, the point is twofold. One, don't think you're gonna write one or two resumes and be done with it, right? Every time you go job searching, you're going to have to tweak your resume for the particular job that you're going for. This is especially true if you go for jobs that are outside of the your wheelhouse or what you've done before, right? So if you've been an analyst your whole life and now you're going for a manager job, well, now you have to change your analyst-like resume to display your managerial skills versus your analytic skills, okay? So there's a difference there, right? It's sometimes it's just a nuance on the words that you're writing. The other thing is that... Not only will you have to write multiple resumes throughout your career, even if it's for the same job, the other thing is when it comes down to it, what's going to get you the job is not the resume. Okay. The, the point that I'm trying to make here is no resume is ever as important as the interview that you go on and the people that you meet. Sometimes you'll actually have the job before you ever turn in a resume because people have already approved you. The, the, whether it's the CEO, the hiring manager, whoever whoever has that authority, they may have already approved you. you you'll still have to turn in a resume because essentially uh, there, are, there are federal guidelines and laws that require a resume to be submitted, right? It's so that everybody can see YA. It's so that there's paperwork that shows the job qualifying process and things like that. But here's the deal. Nobody may ever look at that resume. 
Nobody ever care about that resume. What they care about is when they talk to you, do they feel like you're a good fit for their company? Do they feel like you're a good fit for the team, the agency, whatever the case may be? Do you share the same values? Do you share the same ethics as the other people that you'll be working with? I think that's going to be far more important and especially, I've mentioned this in other videos, but especially if you can get a referral or someone recommend you, someone you know is in the company or, or has some sort of relationship with the company, where, you know, those go much further than just uh, a sheet of paper with words on it. And like I said, I mean, a lot of people, it, you, you, you will have written two or three resumes before you even speak to the, the hiring manager. You may have spoken to recruiters and, or other company reps, and you'll, you'll go in for the interview that day, and the hiring manager may even have your resume in their hand and have not even, even read it. They'll, they'll may say, hmm, no, I'm skimming this right now. It says that you've done this, this, and this before. That's the first time they've looked at it ever, <laughs> right? So... Uh, I, I'm not a resume hater. Well, I kind of am, but but the point is, if you're gonna focus your efforts, focus it on something more important. Okay. The question shouldn't be, what is the difference between a federal resume and a regular resume? They're all different. Even federal resumes from agency to agency, contract to contract, are all different. The thing, the the real question is, what is going to get me that job? And it really boils down to a few things, mainly your people skills. Mainly how can you articulate the value that you can add to the company? What are the things that you learned while you were in the military that you can use to your advantage for the company that you plan on working for or the agency that you plan on working for? Anyways, I think I've beaten that horse to death. And... If you guys have any questions regarding that, if, if, if I, you know, raise some more issues, go ahead and drop comments down in the section below. If you guys would like, uh, if you guys like the video, give it a like. And if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get more. But until next time, I hope everybody's doing well with their job transition, whether you are planning to get out or you're already out. If you ever have any questions, feel free to also PM me, and I'll help out where I can. Okay, thank you for service. Take it easy.